Okay, so I did want to do a video kind of showing you guys a little bit of the behind the scenes stuff that I use to make my videos on my YouTube channel. And I got a couple different categories. I'll be talking about my location, some of the equipment that I use, the cameras, the lighting, the microphones, and of course the cookware, and just basically how I make my videos. So follow me, let's dive in. Okay, the first thing I wanna talk about is location. Right now, this has kind of been my new talking head location. I'm outside on our lawn, I'm sitting on some of our benches, and I tend to do some of the talking heads now out here. Location has always been an issue for me. We have limited space at home, and we were planning on moving and upgrading, but of course, as a lot of you know, during the pandemic, the housing market went insane and we haven't been able to do that. So I've been kind of trying to fight and get a little chunk of space for myself to do some of these videos, but I got to compete with our daughter, our baby, and my wife. So right now I'm thinking this is the best place to do that. It's the most dynamic, it's the most interesting. The other location that I use is actually in the house, in a room. I kind of made a corner space for myself with a sign behind me, the infamous sign that says subscribe. And that's kind of been the talking space for the indoor videos. I don't think that's a very interesting space. There's not a lot going on, and I've tried to dress it up over the years, but it just never quite worked out. So I feel like the outdoor space is kind of taking over temporarily until I find something more permanent. But location for me has always been a challenge to find something interesting with a nice backdrop. I'm hoping to square that away when we do move out and get a little bit more space. But until now, that's really the two talking head film locations. Now, the other locations that I have is actually the side of the house where I do a lot of the barbecuing. Primarily the gas grills located there, the Monument Grill. And also on the lawn, that's another location for my barbecue videos. And I'm sure you've seen the Weber Kettle Grills, the Master Touch Premium, the Weber Kettle Original, and some of the pellet smokers and so forth there. As far as the skillet videos, the indoor cooking videos, that's primarily in our kitchen. But I don't like filming in the kitchen because it does also bounce off a lot of sound and generally speaking it's tight, it's dark, you know, there's not a lot of room. So I've been using recently the portable induction stovetop and trying to use again the outdoor space to do a lot of the cooking videos. So you'll see that in some recent videos. You'll also see the turkey deep frying video which was done in the side of the house and uh, on a table. I'm trying to find dynamic locations to make the videos a little bit more interesting. So obviously filming outdoors is a temporary solution because I can't control the lighting. The sun loves to change directions and then I have to change which bench I'm sitting on. And of course the outdoor sounds, the cars driving by or anything else, planes and so forth. But right now it's temporary, so hang tight. I'll have the locations finalized real soon. Okay, now next, let's talk about cameras. So if you're like me and you kind of nerd out on these things, you'll find this part really interesting. But I have three cameras that I primarily use. I had an old Canon R camera and an old Canon 80D. Now the 80D has kind of retired, but my Canon R, it's sort of the C cam. It's the camera that I use primarily for shots that I know are gonna get dirty or they're gonna be rough or, you know, there's a high risk that the camera's gonna be damaged in, you know, one way or another. The Canon R has worked pretty well for me in those shots. And then I bought the Sony a7S III. The Sony a7S III is definitely my main camera and I use it a lot for 4K footages, the B-roll shots, the talking heads now. It's definitely the jack of all trades camera. It has cinema camera quality, but in a small package. And I really love the Sony a7S III. I think it's a camera that can do it all. And it's my primary rig. Now, I recently bought a cinema camera, the DJI Ronin 4D. I'm hoping to use the DJI Ronin 4D for more of a storytelling camera. It's primarily going to be that specialty camera that really ups the channel's quality. Now, obviously, it's overkill for cooking videos or talking heads. I want to take my experience growing up in the LA restaurant scene and my knowledge of filmmaking and take that cinematic approach, combine it with cooking and other things, right? Reviews and so forth, and give you guys a really cinematic storytelling edge to my videos. So that's kind of my goal. And it's one of the reasons why I decided to buy the Ronin 4D. It has 
a built-in gimbal, so I'm getting a lot of stabilization, and all of the pros of having a cinema camera, like an internal ND filter and all that stuff. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, that's okay. Like I said, for you nerds out there that are like me, you're gonna geek out on these things, but I felt like the Ronin 4D was a great future-proof camera to kind of drive us into the next chapter of this channel. But primarily right now, you're gonna see the Sony a7S III. Most of the 4K footages are from the Sony a7S III. I am sprinkling in the Ronin 4D here and there, testing it out. And then occasionally for the really dirty scenes or <laughs> if I just know the camera's gonna get messed up, I'll use the Canon R. The Canon R does shoot in 4K, but it's limited. And it does have really nice 1080p that I occasionally use for slow motion. So. You'll see the Canon R, but it is being phased out. Okay, now let's talk about sound. So I actually have a lot of sound equipment. I think lighting and sound is equally, if not more important than the camera that you're using. And I have really three go-to mics that I use for talking heads and for on-camera microphones. I primarily use my Sony digital mic, which I've done a review on. Now for anything outdoors that requires a distance or more for like interview style or so forth, I have the Rode Wireless Go 2. I've also done a video comparing the Rode Wireless Go 2 to the Sony digital mic, if you guys are interested. And I also have the Deity D4, I think, or D3, I forget which one. And that's actually primarily on the Ronin right now. And if you're also interested, I've done a video comparing all the mics and a cheap mic and the quality of each and what you can expect from you know spending a little bit more money so i have a video on that i'll link it you know somewhere over here now for the voiceover work where i'm primarily recording sound indoors i use my sure sm7b it's a tried and true microphone it's amazing for voiceovers for podcasting even for singing and i think it's a highly versatile mic and i really love that mic it's probably my favorite mic in the bunch. So what about lighting? I have a lot of lights. I have the Godox as my main key light. I've done a video on that. I also have some bi-color and RGB LED lights. They're on the cheaper side, but they're a great value. You got three of them in, you know, in a package with stands and everything. And I have those placed out randomly in different locations. And then I have on-camera video lights that I use quite frequently. One of them is by Aperture uh, that I absolutely love. And then I also have some cheaper ones made by newer and so forth budget friendly lights that I use primarily because I know they're going to get like grease splatter and other things that may damage them. And I'm always looking to buy more. I'm actually looking to buy a portable Godox light real soon as a portable key light. So lighting is very important. Early on in the channel, my channel was very dark as I was building up, you know, my equipment. And now I think we're starting to find a place for lighting. Okay, let's talk about some of the pots and pans. So you've seen my pots and pans collection. You know I'm a big cast iron, carbon steel, and stainless steel guy, but primarily I'm mostly carbon steel and stainless steel now. You know what my favorite pans are. The Mineral B is probably my favorite carbon steel with the Matford really close behind. And then for the stainless steel, I love my all clad D3. It's my workhorse, but I also love my Kirkland copper core set, which is you know primarily what I use at home. Now I do have some pans that I've sacrificed for video purposes. To give you an example, this Lodge 10 inch cast iron skillet, I've primarily used to demonstrate, you know, seasoning stripping or issues with seasoning or, you know, various other things like acidic foods and stuff like that. So I don't really use this cast iron pan anymore, but its main purpose right now is for video purposes to kind of demonstrate different issues or mistakes that you may or may not run into. And then my budget friendly carbon steel pan, which Again, there's nothing wrong with these pans. If you own them, they're fantastic pans. But for video purposes, I don't really need them. I have a big collection. So I kind of use this pan as my carbon steel example for any issues that may or may not go wrong. Again, they're really good pans. I'm not you know, saying they're bad or you know, I chose them for a specific reason. It's just my other pans cover my cooking needs and these ones are more for props for my videos. Also, I have some older stainless steel pots that I don't really need or care for. They're actually really budget friendly and they have the welded disc, but you know, the welded disc is not an issue. I just wanna make that clear. Higher end pots and pans with the welded disc, do it right. It's the cheaper ones that you should be worried about. This one's a cheaper one. I also use it primarily as a prop that I know I can use and abuse and not have to worry about. And then as far as knives and everything else, I think for everything else I'm set. What you see is what you get. It's what I use on a daily basis. 
The cast iron lodge 10 inch and the carbon steel are primarily just props. That's it. I just use them to demonstrate issues. Everything else that you see me using in my videos, the all clad, the Kirkland, the mineral B, the Matford, those are the pans I use day in and day out every day. Okay, now as far as barbecues go, my Weber Master Touch Premium Charcoal Kettle Grill is the main charcoal grill. I love that grill. It's a great versatile grill. It has some issues, but I do really like it. Now you guys know that my dream charcoal grill is eventually getting that Weber Charcoal Summit Kamado grill. And uh, I'm saving up to get that and I need the space as well. So that's a future purchase that I'm gonna get. And then of course I have the Weber Original Kettle Premium. I use that more as a prop now or for cooking events that I know are really going to dirty up the grill. Like if I'm doing a lot of carne asada or chicken for a big party, I'll whip that out because I know it's gonna make a mess and I'll have to detail clean it. I use the Weber Master Touch Premium more for everyday cooking for videos and for smoking. I recently got the Monument gas grill, six burner gas grill. I did a giveaway on that and a full review. I love that grill. I think it's a fantastic grill. I use that for everyday convenience. If we need something really quick, we want to barbecue something real quick, that's my go-to grill. And I also have the Charboil portable grill. I used to have it. I gave that away. And a portable pellet grill for smoking that I still use from time to time. I do want to get a larger pellet grill, a full-size pellet grill that I can use for low and slow or, you know, maybe more advanced smoking, cooking, cookout, grilling sessions, like doing a brisket or so forth. So stay tuned for that. There's a couple of companies that are trying to reach out to me, possibly sponsor this channel. We'll see. There's more going on in the works, so stay tuned. So that's basically it. I hope I gave you guys kind of like an overview, a little bit of behind the scenes. You know, the goal of this channel originally for me was to even introduce some interviews and travel and go interview some chefs, you know, in the LA restaurant, scene and give you guys an idea or perspective from chefs, from, from actual restaurants, from big restaurants here in LA. And of course, COVID kind of hindered that. I also want to do a lot more vlogging, let you guys kind of get to know me and my family and take you on some of my cooking journeys or just, you know, journeys in general. And then of course, a lot of cooking recipes, a lot of cooking videos, reviewing certain things and giving you guys my advice over the years, learning from the best in the LA scene, doing a lot of pan reviews, cookware reviews, barbecue videos, barbecue reviews. But I also wanna drive that cinematic approach and start doing a little bit more of storytelling and kind of spicing it up with the filmmaking experience that I do have. So I wanna to continue to grow this channel. Obviously I'm looking for feedback from you guys. I hope you guys like the direction that's going so far and hopefully we'll continue down this really cool path and see where we go. If you want me to dive in deeper to the techniques that I use and you know maybe more of the camera or the sound or the editing, I'm more than happy to do so. But until then, that's it for me guys. I hope you found this video informative. Check out some of my other videos and I will catch you on the next one. Take care everybody. Hey everybody, I really hope you enjoyed that video. Please support the channel by liking, subscribing, and sharing with your family and friends. Follow us on social media and check out our new merchandise store. And above all, thank you for supporting this channel and thank you for watching.